What is going on with you guys right now? What kind of business and monetization could you guys do right now? The answer is not a lot. Not a lot if you have classes to worry about. Not a lot if non-Swedish classes are giving you a hard time graduating. <laughs> especially not if the projects are so short and the experience is still not there to get everything done on time. So I'm taking a step back and I'm trying to see what is keeping you guys busy right now. So, I want to open up the floor and give you guys the opportunity of asking me anything, anything that involves the struggles and the challenges that you guys have right now with the games you're making right now. Who has this problem? Just, just a quick raise of hands. Who's also challenged with this? Okay. Um, so, how many people of you have participated in the Global Game Jam? Raise your hand. Everybody, almost. Rapid prototyping is something that is incredibly well documented. Um, it's something that is actually out there and, and, and findable. This is actually what I used when I started at Archivist, which is a small game studio I set up together with my boss in, in, in Bangkok May last year. And we got each of our developers to make a prototype in the first week we started the company. And there was a great team bonding experience. Suddenly we had five projects within the first week of the company's existence. So there's your answer. Anyone else? I've already mentioned a couple, so I'm, I'm going to ask, okay, who has problems with Swedish classes? Raise your hand. What are the main problems with Swedish classes? You two. What are your main problems with it? It's um, a waste of time, I know that, but... Yeah, well, you just, you don't usually use Swedish. But, uh, it's mandatory, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about mandatory classes for a second, because everyone, who has a mandatory class they don't like? That's a lot of people. Okay, hey, we're getting, we're getting to things that everyone is, is, is... Mandatory classes, okay, we got Swedish here, that's an example. I actually talked to a couple of students about this yesterday. How can you make Swedish classes interesting for you? It's mandatory, you have to do it, you have to go, oh, I hate Swedish. When I was in college, I had a similar situation with a lot of classes. Why am I doing this? What's the use of this? I was demotivated, I got bad grades, those grades got me from cum laude to almost cum laude. Swedish classes. What I tried when I was in college is I tried to apply every single mandatory class in a way that was useful to myself in any kind of, you know, process. Swedish classes. Try to make it fun for yourself. You know, gamify that shit in a certain sense where you try to make it, you know, acceptable. You, you can't break the rules with class. You can't break the rules with school, but you can definitely bend them in your, in your you know, favor. <coughs> If there's assignments that sound boring, try to be creative. You guys are the most creative people in Finland. You guys are game developers. How can you make that kind of stuff fun for yourself? That's the biggest challenge of them all. And you guys can do that. You know, I, meant, I heard that you know, mathematics and physics were also classes that some people were bothered with. Who, who has a tough time doing that stuff? All right, that's that's the entire corner over there. I guess you sat together for this specific point. It's the same thing over there. It's it's mandatory. It sucks. It's part of school. How can you guys make the best use of it? You know, there's tons of papers about mathematical algorithms that calculate 3D uh, models and and all that kind of stuff. I can give you a couple actually. There's uh, even papers on those kind of subjects by Naughty Dog, Crytek. Um, it software. Um, make it applicable to yourself. Yes. Uh, the problem isn't really with the subjects themselves, but rather that the things they teach us there don't seem to apply too well to the projects we have at hand and the things we do in practice. They just the theory and practice don't seem to match to that much, which is the re uh, which is my biggest uh, problem. With the <coughs> Doesn't that apply with like ninety percent of your classes? Yeah, it does. But yeah, it's kind of a problem with many of the mandatory classes that they don't match much with the project stuff. 
I want to make one thing very clear to you guys. Someone told me about this word a couple of days ago, Sisu. <laughs> what do you do when you're in a situation where you have no choice? Where some things you just can't go around about, but you accept them. In life, things happen. Sometimes we don't have a choice. I was informed of one of your fellow students having died in a car crash. And I remember her because she sat like, right there where this young man with his green bottle was sitting when I was speaking in 2011. She was one of the few people that actually was here every single day for the five days that I gave a lecture each day here at Kayan in 2011. Life sucks sometimes. And we can act as a victim, we can blame people, we can blame ourselves. In the end, we have to accept some things. And these classes are shit. These classes are not fun. They're keeping you from doing what you want to do. But there has to be a point where we look at each other and we accept it and we make the best of it. I've already heard that people are working together, that they're pushing each other, that they're helping each other at topics that aren't their expertise, and that those people are helping others with topics that are their expertise. If you guys are facing these challenges, make sure to look around and band together and share notes, help each other with the homework, help each other with the projects. You know, I'm not saying cheat. Definitely don't cheat. But find these solutions. You are the creative people, the most creative people in this country. You are some of the most talented students in game development in this country. If you can't find a solution to your own problems, how are you going to find a solution to making the funnest game in the world? <coughs> Am I right? So make your life fun first before you start thinking about how you make other people's life fun first. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself um, and how I dealt with adversity. When I was here in 2011, I was not going through a very easy time. Uh, things weren't looking out. I just lost my job. I was here. Uh, working with two of your fellow students back at the time on a project and uh, two months after I visited here that project sadly <coughs> ended and it crushed me and exactly one week after that project ended my girlfriend left me and exactly one week after that I ended up in a depression for four or five months I played about 300 hours of League of Legends <laughs> that helped because it was with friends you never play League of Legends alone that sucks. And I was at the deepest, deepest, deepest point in my life. Um, I even had a suicide attempt. I had two. And I didn't see any, any hope or any use in me being on this planet anymore. But I went into therapy. I was lucky, you know. Um, had three months of that and had an opportunity to go speak in Thailand because two of your fellow students who were at that time studying there and had talked to the professors there about me. And so the professors there invited me to be there for a week and talk to their students and speak at their Thai game jam. It was amazing. And I decided, you know what? What do I have to lose? Sold all my property. Used that money to buy a ticket to fly to Thailand. And I spent three months there traveling, looking around. Trying to find myself again, like, what's my use? What's, why am I here? What am, what am I on this planet for? You know, how can I make myself useful before I jump off a cliff again? Or try to jump off a cliff. And um, in the end, right before I left Asia, I got a job offer to become a producer of a brand new game studio. I've never been a producer, really. Like, I have no idea. I've worked in a couple of games, but it wasn't the same. And it was a huge cultural barrier. I felt like crap. I thought like everything I was doing was bad. There was a lot of mandatory stuff too. I had to go through, you know, like taxes, I need to, got, need to get a worker visa, a lot of, lot of bureaucracy, stuff that I didn't really like doing at all, that my boss didn't like doing at all, but we had to. We had to accept the fact that if we wouldn't do that kind of stuff, we wouldn't be able to make those games. 
And even in the six months that I was there and we worked on several projects and the team was getting together and we got a, an art pipeline and a programming pipeline going from scratch, because we were too stupid to look into the books I'm just referring to, in the end, there was progress. In the end, there was something that came out of it. And I realized that if there's one thing I still have to do on this planet, is to help others. And to make sure that the lessons I've learned and the mistakes I've made make it easier for other people. So to come back to the answer with those classes, there are second year students, there are third year students. There are people who are going through the things that you might be going through out there, in here. You are not alone. You should never be alone. Because there's always someone who you can help, and there's always someone who can help you. Who has actually actively looked for help when it comes to these classes? Who hasn't, and why? Why? I haven't really had any trouble with the class so far. Okay, okay, so I'm saying, so, okay, so go to this guy. <laughs> he knows everything. You have a community here. You have a team of people.